All right, Joe Biden. So everybody has heard this, but once again, I'll reiterate. When I talk about news on the podcast, it's like it's already happened. It's already been floating around for a couple days. There's not like new information that I, the dictator of the Kiwi Farms, could possibly like show tell you about the president of the United States. But when we talk about it, it's sort of like, well, this is where we're at. And if you're listening three years from now. It's funny, when I first started doing the podcast, I would say, like, in the, if you're listening in the trenches of the far-off year of 2023, during the Civil War, you'll know what was going on at this time. And now I have to, like, bump that up. If you're listening in the Civil War of 2027, you, you'll, um, uh, you'll know where we're at. So, shout-out to the boys listening in 2027. The boys listening in 2023 already came and went. Um, the president of the United States of America, who has served one term as president, two terms as vice president, is not seeking re-election. And he says in his letter, which was posted to Zitter, My fellow Americans, over the past three and a half years, we have made great progress as a uppercase N nation. Today, America has the strongest economy in the world. That is absolutely not fucking true. Um, we've provided critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances, passed the first gun safety law in 30 years, appointed the first African-American woman to the court of the Supreme Court, and passed the most significant climate legislation in the history of the world. America has never been be better positioned to lead than we are today. Um, I disagree. I know none of this could have been done without you, the American people. I know America has never been better positioned to lead than we are today. I disagree. There was a point in history where all of Europe was completely raised to the fucking ground and all of China and all of Japan. And we were like the only industrial capacity country in the entire world. I think that was probably a better time. I don't know. Whatever. Um, together, we overcame a once-in-a-century in pandemic and the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We protected and preserved our democracy, and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your president, and it has been my intention to seek re-election. I believe it is the best, or while it has been my intention, I now believe it is in my in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. I will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me reelected. Um, and I believe he then says... He doesn't explicitly nominate her. He actually, he does in a second tweet. So this, this is the first anomaly. Biden drops out of the election. I remind you, he's already won. <laughs> he was in a lightly contested election. He very easily closed out the, the, uh, the polls. Uh, nobody seriously ran against him. And he was supposed to go to the DNC in August like August 8th, I want to say, and receive the nomination. So he's already won the election. There is no more election. He's won. So now he's dropped out suddenly, unexpectedly, at the same time that he caught COVID. So he caught COVID. I mentioned that on Friday. I mentioned it was kind of weird that this was like the third time he had caught COVID. He disappears. He publishes a statement to Zitter after he had won the election. Um, saying that he was not seeking re-election. And then on Zitter, he nominates Kamala. There is no message on the White House correspondence. This was not published um, anywhere else. It was just on Zitter. Hello, Zitter. It's your boy, JB4042. Uh, and uh, I'm not running for re-election anymore. Bye! There's no, like, seal. There's no, uh, you know, president... Like letterhead, it's just like a like a Google Docs template saying, "Yeah, I'm not running for re-election anymore." Um, and I don't think he's been seen since. Is this correct, Chat? Is he still not been seen in public? Hold on, let me look for something. Oh, 
<laughs> I'm trying to search for something. I'm just getting YouTube warnings. No, it, don't believe any conspiracies. Conspiracies are bad. Don't think for yourself. Trust us. Okay, let me read my chat. Am I correct about this, that he's been gone ever since? He was seen in a car. He's fucking dead. He's with Mama JF. <laughs> He's been seen, quote unquote. He turned up today. He was confused. Yes, he died. Freaking died. Okay, so this is what I want to show you. I saw this on the platform formerly known as Twitter. Um, and why does this not let me show like the big version? I'm just type in Joe Biden signature. Maybe I'll debunk this live on stream because I'm a little bit curious. Here, this is what I saw. Um, you can very clearly see that the Joe Biden signature in this letter is supposedly, like just the, the way that the R is done, the B is the big one. It's like completely different. And he usually scribbles his lettering a little bit differently. So I don't know if maybe he just uses like a clone like, he did this once, and it's, like, stored in Adobe Acrobat, and he just prints that out, and it's a little bit different. Except for the B and the, the weird underlining. It's, like, it's different, chat. My point is that there is now a conspiracy theory that Joe Biden is dead, and they have uh, forged his signature, and they will keep him gone until such a time where it's convenient for them. The auto pen did it. Dementia fucks with your handwriting. <laughs> there is no R in Biden. It's his middle name, you f fucking idiot. <laughs> Come on now. Um, so this left the 2024 election in like a weird position where Trump is running effectively unopposed. There is no clear candidate for for president in the United States anymore uh, from the Democratic Convention. Because if you don't remember, I played a video on the uh, on this podcast where I talked about how uh, pr pr Trump was caught on tape and he was talking about how they might take out Biden and run Kamala. And Trump laughed and said, oh, God, I hope they do. She's even worse. <laughs> so he's not very intimidated by Kamala or Kamala. Um she sucks. She's ugly. She stinks of curry. Just not very, very uh, appealing, Chet. Not very appealing. She um, wrote, she personally sent a vice presidential letterhead to the um, days of girlhood tranny freak Dylan Mulvaney, congratulating Dylan on 365 days of living authentically. So you got like this pro troon freak. At a time where Troon shit is like at the absolute fucking bottom of its popularity. Uh, since, it, since it started picking up. And it's like, well, how are you going to, um, how are you going to overcome that? And who are you going to pick as your, your vice presidential candidate? Um, so I kicked around some ideas. I think the poll even on the thread has my, my polls still. So, um. The options that I suggested were be Kamala Harris, which is currently winning at 753 votes. Hillary Clinton, mm, it's her turn, 178 votes. Gavin Newsom, uh, 121 votes. Um, so he's in the bottom. He's the uh, governor of California. I said some black woman or gay man, which would include Oprah, chat. It would include Oprah. 668 votes, which is the second highest at 29.6%. Uh, and then Taylor Swift. Now, here's the thing. Someone raised this question. Is Taylor Swift eligible? I discussed this with Harden. I'm not joking. I actually asked um, him what he thought about Taylor Swift running. Because she's 34. The election is in November. She turns 35 in December. And if you don't know, you have to be 35 to run for or become president. So she could run for president legally. There is case law going back centuries saying that it's okay for you to run for an office that you qualify for after the election, but before you actually take the oath. So she would be 35 um, in January where she would be sworn in. So Tay-Tay can run 
for president of the United States if she so chooses. She has not indicated that she would run for president, but she can. Um, Michelle Obama would also qualify for some black woman and also a gay man. So that's why uh, I think Oprah and Big Mike both collapse into this category. However, I think Michelle Obama had said that she slash he does not intend to run. So um, I don't I I don't see that happening, to be honest with you. Uh, now, other I don't know, it could be anybody. Supposedly, Kamala has it locked in. She's not technically the nomination yet, but Biden did endorse her. Um, I think Biden's campaign money already sloshed over to uh, Kamala, so that's where the money might be going, and they're going to nominate whoever can get the most donors. Uh, supposedly, she's already filed with the uh, Federal Election Commission, her campaign of Kamala and if I remember correctly, it's like a bull dyke lesbian that's the governor of Wisconsin. I don't, I'm not familiar with this person at all, but I remember that it was this person. Um, someone suggested that it would be Kamala and uh, Newsom, and that's not happening. It's actually unconstitutional for Kamala and Newsom to run on the same ticket because the little-known 12th Amendment to the United States prohibits um, two candidates from the same state for being vice president and president at the same time. So uh, Newsom and Kamala are both Californians and therefore would not be able to occupy the same ticket. Uh, someone suggested Al Gore. And um, my, my, ta my take on that is that if you're going to run Al Gore, it should be Taylor Swift as president and Gore as vice president because then it the ticket would be Swift-Gore. And I think a lot of people would be willing to vote for Swift-Gore. I think that's an awesome name. Um, I don't know what it implies. I don't think people, I don't think people really think things through. Swift Gore is just a funny name. <laughs> so they would vote for it. Harris Gore is not the, not as funny though. I would advise against that. It's not a serial suggestion. It is a serial suggestion. I believe that works out. Because if you're going to run the, the new kid, you're going to need Kamala. <laughs> Kamala needs the whitest man that's ever existed, basically, to be her vice presidential pick. Um, Al Gore is probably a good candidate for that. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Bill Fair. Remember to like and subscribe.